All right, hi guys, welcome, welcome to Facebook Live. I am Katie Ferraro. I am here today to talk to you all about facing your feeding fears head on. So, uh, welcome, thank you for joining me. I hope you can hear the audio and I have been surveying my audience for the last week trying to find out the things that they're really fearful about when it comes to feeding the baby. So. Um, I'm super surprised by the things that you guys are kind of scared of and that's okay So we are talking today about your biggest fears And so I have a ton of questions if you have questions go ahead and put them in the comments and I've got been getting lots of emails and comments this week and posts all about The things that scare you so we're gonna talk about why we're scared when it comes to starting our kids on food so just to give you an idea some of the feedback that I've gotten from people about uh, things that they're scared of okay gagging and choking is the number one thing and that has like far and above freaks all parents caregivers out when it comes to starting food so I want to let you guys know that I'm actually bringing on a pediatric feeding specialist who's a speech-language pathologist um, her name is Dawn she's so amazing and she's gonna be joining us in two weeks and she's gonna do like the whole soup to nuts everything you need to know about gagging so i'm going to help you get over your fear of gagging and that's in two weeks so I'll let you know about it so we're going to touch on gagging then because she's the expert and i want to let her know about that um i'm going to be talking today about some of the nutrition related stuff and we're going to be focusing a lot on what not to feed your baby because i firmly believe that if you know what not to do it will totally help you trying to learn what you should be doing so if you want to go ahead and download, I have five foods never to feed your baby and it's a handout. Just wanna show that to you. We're gonna be going through some of this beautiful information, but if you need to grab it now, the link is in the video title. It's also gonna be in the comments. Or if you wanna go ahead and download it, you can go to neverfeed.babyledweaning.co and get the food. So we're gonna go through this whole list today and I'm kinda of gonna explain it more in detail. But um, before we do that, what I want to uh, talk to you about a little bit is, okay, gagging and choking is a fear, right? Um, what to feed your baby is a fear. I think a lot of parents are like, yeah, I know the first couple of foods, but like, how do I transition to combination foods? So that's, I spend a lot of time talking about that in my materials because it is an area where I see parents get um, stuck. I also am getting a lot of questions about picky eating, which I think is so interesting because it's a lot of the things that parents who already have an older kid sometimes worry about with their babies. Like I know I have an almost three year old who's super picky. So with my quadruplet babies, like it's always in the back of my head, like what can I do to make these babies not as picky as their older sister is? So um, we're gonna be talking a little bit about picky eating today too. And then another one that I was super surprised to see um, pop up like routinely when I was questioning you guys about your biggest feeding fears was constipation. And a lot of parents are like, not like fearful of it for no reason, like maybe it will happen, like it's actively happening and they're either giving their baby a bunch of prunes or Miralax and they're like, is it the food that's stopping them up? So um, I wanna make sure that we can address that as well. So when we think about our fears and where they come from, okay, not to like get to, you know, psycho babble on you, but if you look at your source of your fears when it's related to infant feeding, um, it can come from a number of places. I think of some parent-based fears. Uh, for example, picky eating, okay? So I have a friend who wrote to me and she's actually a speech language pathologist and she said that she herself is a picky eater. And so when it comes to feeding her baby and her children, the thing that she's most concerned about is, okay, are they going to be picky as well? Like nobody wants to be a picky eater. Um, and so we do know that earlier introduction of a wide variety of foods has been shown to help reduce picky eating. And it's not just the type of food, it's taste, it's textures as well. And so when I have Dawn on in two weeks, she's gonna be talking all about different textures, okay? Because um, purees are a texture that we know about for feeding babies, but too often it's the only texture that parents offer for a really long time, and you're really not challenging your baby. So we're gonna teach you some ways to mix up your textures. We're actually gonna be doing a five-day texture challenge together if you wanna join in, and I'll be sending you more info about that. And by the way, if you have friends who have babies who are four or five, coming close to six months, which is when you wanna start feeding, Go ahead and share the video out to them too so that they can join um, in the series that I'm doing on Facebook Live, but they can also join in our texture challenge too. So um, introduction of a variety of different foods, okay, as well as textures can help prevent picky eating, but you have to do it in that kind of honeymoon period, which is somewhere between six and 12 months of age. Some other resources say six and 14 months, but the point is you can't wait till your baby's like well into their second year to start offering different textures. And I see a lot of parents doing that a lot. 
Um, some of our fears may also be experience-based, okay? So um, we know that there are instances of extreme picky eaters. It has kind of a more technical name, but we parents with, you know, uh, not in the uh, feeding difficulty area would just call it extreme picky eating that they sometimes have very minimal number of foods that a baby or a kid will take because maybe they've had an experience like choking where they choked on a certain type of food and it's totally shut down their ability to handle their foods and then in that case you know you definitely would want to be working with a feeding expert um, some of the stuff we're talking about today is for you know your typical you might say healthy kid with no diagnosed feeding problems but then there's also fear of the unknown, right? We sometimes are fearful about things that we don't know about. Um, for example, like what foods to feed or not to feed. If it's your first baby, you maybe have information from your pediatrician. We were talking last week in the Facebook Live about how I was doing a focus group of parents of first time kids, well, first time parents of kids, who 85% of them have been told by their pediatrician to start feeding white rice cereal at four months of age. And if you follow that video or you know the basics of introducing your kid to solid food, there's no reason to feed a four month old baby solid food, right? They're not ready yet, but on top of that, they don't need it. So sometimes we get misinformation, but sometimes we're just not sure. So what I wanna talk about today are the five foods never to feed your baby, okay? And the five foods never to feed your baby is definitely not an exhaustive list. But um, in the method that I teach about introducing solid foods, which is called baby led weaning, I really advocate for the reality that you can actually feed your baby almost anything, but not everything. Okay. So babies can eat almost anything if we're talking about age appropriate and texture appropriate foods, but there's certainly a couple of foods that you do want to steer clear from. And so that's what we're talking about today. Um, I, again, if you want to download the PDF that has the foods that I'm talking about, you can do that by going to this website, neverfeed.babyledweaning.co. Okay. And it's a one page handout here. And I'm going to go through these and kind of explain the five foods that you don't want to feed your baby. Okay. Again, not an exhaustive list, but just like the basic ones. Okay. And I'm going to start out with number one. Okay. And that's popcorn. Now you might be like, why would a baby want to eat popcorn? Okay. Cause we talk about the importance of babies eating whole grains and popcorn is a whole grain, but it's not appropriate for babies because the little kernels can choke them. Even a whole popped kernel could potentially pose a choking risk. So there's lots of other ways that we can get our babies whole grains. Um, if you think about corn being a whole grain, one of the foods that I know my baby quadruplets love for breakfast is cornbread. Okay. I make cornbread, uh, using, whole corn meal. So that's a whole grain. It's not going to be a choking risk. So again, the first food that you want to make sure you don't feed your baby is popcorn. And we actually don't feed little kids popcorn either if you can help it because it could potentially be a choking risk. And there's lots of other whole grains that babies can have. Okay. Number two. Okay. And this is for little babies. The ones just starting out, but the second food I'm going to say that you don't feed your baby are nut butters. Now, Older babies can certainly handle almond butter, peanut butter. We have new guidelines that show actually the earlier introduction of potentially allergenic foods like peanuts actually might be protective against peanut allergy. So parents are hearing these conflicting messages like, wait a minute, I'm supposed to feed my six month old peanuts so they don't get allergic to peanuts, but then I'm not supposed to feed them peanut butter or actually nuts because those are choking hazards. So my recommendation, again, when you're just starting out, you know, those first couple of weeks, even maybe months as your baby's learning to chew and swallow, and by the way, they do not have to have teeth to swallow or chew, um, you don't want to start with nut butters, okay? Because if you think about it, it's a really sticky item that's super hard for the baby to maybe um, push into the right area of the swallowing mechanism. It could get stuck on the roof of the mouth. There's other more healthy ways that we can introduce peanuts. And we'll talk about those in a later Facebook Live. Um, next week, I'm having another guest on the live stream and I'm so excited. It's Dr. Amy Bleakney, uh, sorry, not Blakely, um, Dr. Amy Blakely. And she is the author of a book called Inventing Baby Food. And she's gonna talk all about the history of like how we got to the point today where there's this whole aisle at the grocery store and Target that has all this ridiculous food that your baby really doesn't need, okay? she probably will use more eloquent language than that. But nut butters are the second food that you definitely don't wanna feed a brand new eater. Now, when your babies get a little bit you know, more experienced, I mix peanut butter in with yogurt or I'll put a thin layer of it on top of waffles or pancakes or even bread, but it is sticky and can be a potential choking hazard. So there's definitely other foods that we might wanna start with. Number three, the food that you want to avoid are whole nuts. Okay, now 
Whole nuts are a problem, again, because of choking. So you can use, for example, you wanna feed your baby almonds, okay, you wanna stay away with the little babies from the butters, maybe grind the almonds up and make an, you know, an almond flour and then do a baked product with that or make a bread with some of that. So there are ways to introduce these nuts to our babies, but you just wanna stay away from the whole nut because of course that is going to be a choking hazard. Okay, the next food to stay away from, this is number four on the list, is going to be whole grapes. And I also put whole cherry tomatoes in that same category, okay? Because obviously like the entire grape could just like, it's the perfect size and could lodge in the throat of a baby and be a choking risk. You can see a lot of these recommendations are because of the potential for choking. So that is a really real fear if you are scared of choking, um, but it's not the same as gagging. So remember in two weeks, we're gonna be talking all about why gagging is good. And what I would recommend you do if you're getting to the point where you're starting to feed your baby is why not take a refresher CPR course, okay? Because you probably took CPR before your baby was born, but you're gonna need to do it again when they come close to eating because I like can't remember things from a week ago, let alone six months ago when my baby was born. So think about an infant CPR class, refresher course to know how to identify choking and know what to do, and then also to stay away from these foods that could potentially be choking risk. So when it comes to grapes and tomatoes, I avoid those for the really little babies. Again, once your baby gets a little bit more established, you can do quarters, okay? It's kind of a good way to start. And then older babies can probably handle halves, okay? So um, there's actually some pretty cool devices online. I never thought that I would find myself searching for and purchasing a device to cut cherry tomatoes in half, but um, I have five kids who love cherry tomatoes and I don't have all day to stand around and uh, cut them open. So I've actually found some tools that can do it for me. The key is to cut those up and start with quarters for the younger babies. Again, there's probably better softer fruits to start with from the outset. Okay, and the number five in the five foods that you don't wanna feed your baby, number five is honey. Now, the first four were having to do with choking, okay? And there's lots of other things that you could put on that choking list, like it could go on and on. Like, obviously you don't wanna give your kids hard candy, okay? Hard candy is actually the number one choking, uh, the reason why kids present to an emergency department with choking is because of hard candy. So totally inappropriate to give kids for obvious reasons, because they don't eat candy, but also because of the choking. But also, um, just to back it up, hard fruits, like for example, apple slices, okay? You don't wanna give raw apple slices at the beginning. There's no real reason to, okay? Um, it's a much safer way to make apples for babies. What I do for our babies is I just peel the apples, I quarter them, I cook them on the stove top in a little bit of water and a lot of cinnamon for about like 30 minutes. They turn super soft. It's a texture that the babies can easily pick up themselves, but they can chew it pretty easily and it's not gonna pose a choking hazard. Um, because there's actually a pretty interesting study that was done two years ago now that showed that after hard candy, apples represented the biggest choking risk in this certain population and even for older kids. So watch out for your older kids when it comes to hard fruit. Um, again, there's lots of other fruits that we can feed our babies. But moving on to honey, which is number five. Okay, the potential and the risk for honey has to do with infant botulism. So you and I as adults, we have developed immune systems. Um, the spores that potentially could cause botulism that are present in raw and uncooked honey, those are not problematic for us. But in our babies less than one year old, honey is not appropriate because it could potentially cause infant botulism. Now. When we're talking about fears and the source of fear, and sometimes you hear people say, well, you know, that the source of fear is sometimes irrational. Okay, that's certainly a rational fear, okay, that your baby could get infant botulism, which is a terrible neurological disease that could end in coma and death, except that if you look at the data, um, there's about just over 100, 128 cases, I believe, in 2014, which is the last year for which there's data of infant botulism. So like of all the babies in the United States who are starting food, like the likelihood that your baby would have botulism is low unless you were feeding a food like raw or wild honey, which in some cultures is actually part of their cultural food practice. So um, not so much in your typical Western culture. And I always get lots of questions from parents when it comes to honey, like, yeah, I get it. I'm not gonna like give my baby raw honey, but what about baked goods that have honey in it? And then what about things like Honey Nut Cheerios? So I actually um, just this week spoke with a representative from General Mills about Honey Nut Cheerios. Now, Honey Nut Cheerios aren't the best food to feed your baby because they have added sugar, but like, okay, if my baby got his hands on some Honey Nut Cheerios, would it be the end of the world? And the answer is no. Okay, according to General Mills, they say that the honey in Honey Nut Cheerios has been cooked or processed, they don't use that word process, but that's what they mean, to the level such that it would not represent a risk for infant botulism if fed to children less than one. Now, my recommendation again is, you know, stay away from Honey Nut Cheerios because your kids don't need a sugar sweetened cereal. If you look at Honey Nut Cheerios in a serving, there's actually the equivalent of two packets of sugar 
more than if you just chose the regular yellow box of Cheerios. So Cheerios are a great food for kids, okay? But the ones from the yellow box. And once your kid's around eight or nine months old, they start to develop that pincer grasp. They can pick up the Cheerios. Cheerios are cool because they dissolve on your tongue, okay? And like General Mills is starting to actually tout that as one of the benefits of regular Cheerios is that they're safe for babies. They're great for little fingers to pick up. They dissolve on the tongue. A lot of parents buy those puff things, which is just like, four dollars for air okay uh, because they dissolve on the tongue but cheerios do the same thing plus in the yellow box they're a whole grain they're iron fortified you know your kid's not eating a ton of cheerios nowhere close probably to a whole serving when they're six months old but still just a good idea to get started on a food like that as opposed to something like honey nuts but just to answer your question because i have a question about honey nut cheerios um it would not pose a threat for infant botulism so those are your five foods never to feed, okay? I'm gonna be talking about some of the other concepts, the gagging and choking in two weeks. Uh, next week I'm talking with um, our guest who's gonna be talking all about what types of foods to feed a baby and then like a lot of really interesting stuff about the history of the use of baby foods because we see all these guidelines fluctuating all the time and it's like, if you're not paying attention for two months, you feel like infant feeding guidelines change. So if those of you that have older kids, you might be used to delay the introduction of peanuts and now they're all about, oh my God, earlier introduction of peanuts. So guidelines definitely change. So I wanna bring in a food historian who's gonna to talk to us a little bit about the history of baby food, which I think is absolutely fascinating. And just to show you that you don't have to buy any special foods or all this weird gadgets just to get your baby to eat foods that are really close to what you and the rest of the family are eating. And then in two weeks again, we're gonna do gagging and choking. So I want you guys, if you can, to go to the URL that you see on the screen and download the PDF, which is five foods to never feed your baby. Now, there's lots of other foods that you should not feed your baby, like obviously alcohol, okay? Like people say, oh, you, you didn't include all the foods, okay? But I'm just including some of the biggies just so you know what foods you shouldn't feed your baby because I think it's helpful when you're trying to learn what you should do if you know what you don't wanna do. I know my dad always told us kids when we were little when we didn't know what job we wanted down the road, he's like, listen, just figure out what you don't wanna do and by process of elimination, you'll end up with what you should do. So same thing with feeding your kids. If you know what not to feed them, okay, you'll end up kind of figuring out the foods that they can eat. And the reality is babies can and should be eating a really wide variety of foods. So just wanna say thank you guys for joining me here on the live stream. If you have questions in the comments that I wasn't able to get to, I'm gonna go back and answer them after on the replay. And again, please feel free to share this out with your friends, especially if you have friends who are maybe a little bit on the fence about, ooh, I'm kinda of scared about starting this whole infant feeding thing. It can be scary, but hey, it's a necessary part of growing up and becoming an older person, and you might as well have some fun with it. And that's my whole motto here at The Fortified Family is, I firmly believe that good food fuels strong families, okay? You've got to make all this food for the little people in your household and the big people, so you might as well have some fun doing it. So thank you guys for stopping by. Great hanging out with you, and hit me up in the comments if you have any additional questions. Bye now.